Hello and welcome to another edition of Active Living. Today we got a very special program. We have T uh, ONTV's own Joe Johnson here. Joe is going to be uh, telling us about his latest trip to the West Coast, his annual pilgrimage to the West Coast. <laughs> Thanks for having me back. Your, your trip to Mecca. <laughs> That's right. My happy place, as right. I like to call it. Yeah. Right. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get out there last year with all the restrictions and everything, so I really missed it badly. Uh, over the past few years, I've gotten out there at least once a year. In 2018, I got out there twice in one year. Fantastic. Uh, so it was nice to go back. I felt pretty comfortable going back. Uh, California's doing pretty well when it comes to the whole COVID thing. And one thing I did notice while I was out there, when I was indoors, whether I was shopping or a restaurant or a museum, everybody wore a mask, everybody. And nobody That's... complained, <laughs> nobody griped. Uh, and I felt very comfortable in that situation. That's great. Yeah. So uh, COVID is, uh, I understand that uh, California, like you said, is doing pretty well with COVID. Yeah, the numbers are down and uh, they're still, you know, feeling the effects of, of having the shutdown and the mandates and all that right. stuff, but they're slowly getting back to normal. That's great. Well, tell us about your, uh, your adventure. Well, let's go in <laughs> uh, chronological order here. Um, so I flew out there on a th Thursday night. Um, and so I didn't have much time to do anything the first night I was out there just to get to the place I was staying. I stayed at a loft uh, that belongs to a friend in a town called Porter Ranch, which is north of Los Angeles. So I just had time to get back there, uh, get the keys, get unpacked, and then fall asleep. The next day I started trying to figure out, okay, where do I want to go? What do I want to do? And I discovered that a place that I wanted to visit was just minutes away from me. It's called, it's the Reagan Presidential Library. Oh yeah. Now, I'm, it wasn't necessarily that I'm a big fan of Reagan. Uh, there's a reason why I went there and I'll show it to you in a second. But the museum, the library turned out to be a pretty cool experience and there were a lot of neat things to see. Um, one of the things that shocked me was Air Force One. Uh, they had his Air Force One plane on display and you were able to board it and uh, tour it and poke your head in the cockpit and everything. Wow, is it there, is it there all the time? It's or does permanently it on display there. Uh, along with Marine One, the helicopter, uh, you're able to get on board the helicopter as well. So it's, it's permanently uh, on display at the exhibit in Simi Valley, uh, California. So the inside of the airplane must be pretty well done, I'll bet. I'll bet. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and it was, it was pretty impressive. Now one thing that kind of made my jaw drop a little bit in this picture that you see here in the top right corner, uh, that is the suit that Reagan wore when he was shot. Really? And it actually, you could see the bullet hole in it, and uh, they had to uh, cut it off of him. You know, when you go into right. surgery, they, they take no time, they cut your suit off. And so they kept that and now it's on display at the museum and they had videos playing of, of that, that horrible, horrible day, but uh, luckily oh. he survived that. Um, they also had a, a, a replica of the Oval Office as it looked when Reagan was in, in office. And I did ask if they had some original artifacts there and they said, yeah, a lot of the knickknacks and decorations okay. came from the Oval Office. Wow. Um, there's a piece of the Berlin Wall, which famously came down right. during, during Reagan's term. So they had a beautiful uh, piece uh, on the grounds. Wow, I didn't realize that they, they actually took a piece of the wall. Yeah, and there's, there's pieces of it. Uh, I saw, I saw it s several pieces in LA a few years ago. Right. Uh, so d they're on display throughout the world as remnants of a bygone era. Right, and Mr. Then, Gorbachev. Take down this wall, <laughs> exactly. right? <laughs> that's, I mean, that's Reagan, you know, yeah. he played a big role in that. That's so. great. And then finally in the bottom right corner there, that's, I didn't realize that uh, Ronald and Nancy are buried on the grounds of the Presidential Library. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, so that's their final resting place uh, in the bottom right corner there, beautiful little marker there, so. Good way to start off your visit. Yeah, exactly. But that's not the main reason that I went. I found out just a week in advance of my trip uh, that the Reagan uh, Library has a temporary FBI exhibit and on display at the uh, exhibit is the Bonnie and Clyde car full of bullet holes. Really? That's the car they died in. Wow. That the FBI ambushed and took out Bonnie and Clyde. You can see a historic like they, photo. Uh, took, took a few shots there. 
<laughs> yes, I forget the exact number, but it was a hundred and something bullets, and they just open fired uh, when they rolled up on that dirt road. And uh, I had heard that the car had been on display at a casino in Nevada for a long time, and I just couldn't, just, yeah. it wouldn't sync up for me to get out there and see it. And so finding out that it was going to be at this museum minutes away from where I was staying, I'm like, I got to see the car. And there, it's not behind glass or anything. There's just the wooden wooden fence there. Uh, so you can actually kind of poke your head pretty close to it and, and get a good look at it. And in the bottom right corner uh, there is, is the shirt that um, Clyde had on when he was he was taken down. With bullet holes. With bullet holes in it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh -huh. uh, at the Henry Ford Museum here in, in Dearborn, uh, they have on display a letter from Clyde Barrow uh, praising Henry Ford for his uh, V8 Ford cars that he enjoyed driving during his bank robberies and getaways. So, <laughs> wow. Yeah, so that was pretty amazing to see, the Bonnie and Clyde car. Uh, I'm not just a Hollywood fan, I'm a history buff too, and so I enjoy seeing history. Well, that would be really interesting to see. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So uh, then on uh, Saturday, I made arrangements um, before flying out there. I'm a car guy. I love cars growing up in Detroit, the Motor City, and I especially love Hollywood cars, famous cars. So before flying out to LA, I reached out to some people on Facebook. I've been obsessed with the TV show, The Rockford Files. You remember The Rockford sure. Files, James Garner? Yeah. I've been binge watching it on DVD. So I reached out to some people through Facebook and I said, do you know of anyone in the LA area that has an original Rockford Firebird? And so I was directed to this guy, Patrick McKinney, uh, who again lived minutes away from where I was staying. And he said, come on out, I'll, I'll show you my cars. Oh, and I'm like, cars? cars? He has three cars uh, that were used on the TV series. Really? Uh, every season, every new season of the Rockford Files, the production company, which James Garner ran, uh, would purchase two new Firebirds. And here's the interesting thing. The previous season Firebirds were returned to the dealership and sold to the public. Okay. And so you were, if you were to visit that dealership, you might see a couple of Firebirds on a lot with a card, and I got a picture of it, that says this Firebird was used in the production of the Rockford Files. Amazing. Isn't that incredible that someone was able to do that? So this guy Patrick was able to track down who purchased those cars and was able to, to get three of them from various seasons of the series. So wow. he has, I think the one in the top left corner is a 77. The one on the top right corner, which he allowed me to sit in, which was cool. I think that might be like a 74 or 75. They have different grills. Um, but in addition to the cars, he has props and scripts from the series. Does he really? There in the center is, if, if you're, if you're a, an astute fan of the Rockford Files, uh, Jim Rockford wasn't licensed to carry a gun, but he had one, and he kept it in his cookie jar. And that cookie jar that you see there is was actually used on the TV show. Really? Yeah. No, no <laughs> weapon was in it, but uh, but that's an actual prop from the cook, uh, the cookie sh jars from the show. And then he had scripts and he had press kits and other props. And uh, so, if you're a fan of the Rockford Files, that that was a great morning. So for this me guy must really be a fan because just to go out and try to trace trace where those cars are exactly after uh, you know after being sold three or four times yeah you can uh, imagine what it was just 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 to chase down who, who owns it yeah and one of the cars that he owns he was able to get a a letter of authenticity from the owner who when she bought the car from the dealership that said it was a rockford car she wanted certification so James Garner typed up a letter and signed it and said, uh, this car was used on the show and I hope you have as much fun with it as I did. Really? And the, when he purchased the car, she gave him the, the letter to go with it. So That's fantastic. Pretty neat. So that was, that was a fun morning hanging out with Patrick and uh, letting me sit in the cars and take pictures. And stuff. Well, you just contacted him through, uh, through, through Facebook. Facebook and yeah, uh, invited me into his garage and we hung out for three hours. <laughs> that's great. So it's a the car community is pretty special. They're yeah. a bunch of fun, friendly guys. So. Sure. Yeah. Uh, on Sunday, football Sunday, I, um, I 
knowing that I was going out to L.A., I looked to see if the Rams would be at home the week that I was out there. And sure enough, I found out that not only were they home, uh, they were playing Tom Brady and the, and the Buccaneers. And so I'm like, I got I to gotta go to that game. So I bought a ticket, went to the brand new SoFi Stadium, recently constructed. Uh, they only started playing football there this season. And the Rams share the stadium with the Chargers, so they have to schedule appropriately. Right. Uh, as a matter of fact, just recently the Rams played on a Sunday, I think, and the Chargers played on a Monday. So, um, so yeah, so it's a beautiful venue, amazing video screens. It was just a giant party. And one of the cool things about going to that game is during timeouts and stuff, the uh, the TV cameras would find celebrities in the audience. Okay. And so in the top right there is uh, some of the actors from my current favorite show, Ted Lasso, uh, about the soccer or the football coach who goes to England to become a soccer coach, okay. and he knows nothing about soccer. <laughs> um, and so it was cool seeing them in the audience. And then Larry David, who I love. Oh yeah, he's great. Uh, he he was hilarious. When they showed him on the screen and the crowd started cheering, he didn't realize what was going on. And then he looks up at the screen and he sees himself and he goes, ah. <laughs> and everyone busted out laughing. But um, there were so many celebrities there. Um, I saw Mike Tyson on the screen, LeBron really? James, Magic Johnson. Um, How about Stafford, the quarterback? Uh, Stafford, <laughs> I, I was cheering him on. He had a great game, and they love him in L.A. Oh. They are embracing Stafford. Well, he's um, got a great season going. He won he last is. night. You know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, the uh, L.A. loves Stafford. Yeah, so it's nice to see. Yeah, he's yeah. doing well. I wish the Lions can get a good quarterback like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's too late now, buddy. He's gone. <laughs> uh, on Monday when I was out there, I... Uh, went to Universal Studios. I haven't been there in 30 years. Last time I went to Universal Studios was in 1990. And so I'm like, I got to get back to Universal Studios. And, and the one thing I did first was take the tram tour. Right. Um, you used to be able to just take the tram tour all by itself. Now it's part of their theme park. Uh -huh. It's like a ride on their theme park. So you got to buy a ticket to the park to take the tram tour. Um, but uh, on the tram tour, there's some classic stuff that people love to see. In, in the top left corner, you see the Psycho House, the Norman Bates right. Psycho House, Bates Motel. Uh, it's the original house that was used in filming. Mm -hmm. I guess originally when, when they built it for the movie, they only constructed two sides, like the front and the side that's uh -huh. facing the camera. But when it became popular on the tram tour, they ended up completing it on the Did other they? side. Hmm. And so um, so it's a full full house now. Um, but yeah, it's nice knowing that it's the original structure from the original movie. Wow. Um, and then, of course, one of the highlights of the ride is the Jaws attraction where the tram pulls up to this body of water and Jaws comes out of the water and scares the, uh, yeah. the, the tram passengers. Um, and they're always pointing out these amazing cars that are on the lot um, as we're driving around. You see the Jurassic Park Jeep, cars from the Fast and Furious, Back to the Future. That red Ferrari there is from, uh, from Magnum P.I. Yeah. Um, and so there's so much to see on the tram tour. And they've updated it quite a bit. They've added uh, like 3D interactive experiences where you put on these glasses mm -hmm. and there's images on these screens and, and really? you become part of the action. And so they've upgraded it quite yeah. a bit because... When I went in 1990, they had like a animatronic King Kong that would like shake the tram. Right. Now it's this 3D experience, and okay. uh, it's pretty neat. I took um, that tour. I don't know. It must have been at least 40 years ago. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's cool. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, very cool. So, and then like I said, part of the experience is the theme park. Um, there's a Simpsons land, which was a lot of fun. I can go into Moe's Tavern. I can go to the Quickie Mart. There's a, a ride in Krusty Land that you can go to. So it's like you're immersed in uh, yeah. the, the Springfield characters, and that was a lot of fun. And then below that was really cool. It was the Harry Potter Land okay. um, where you can get butterbeer and you can shop for magic wands and things. And <laughs> uh, you can visit Hogwarts, and there's a, there's a 3D ride that you can ride um, at Hogwarts. 
Um, so that was really cool. For any fans of the Harry Potter movies, uh, it was an amazing experience. It was it a looks, lot of fun. It looks great. And really there great. was a Jurassic Park ride and all kinds of stuff. So it definitely was a little pricey, but it was worth the price of admission. And uh, I had a lot of fun at Universal Studios. Yeah, it looks like a real, real good afternoon or evening <laughs> That's or whatever. Right. Yeah. yeah. Now, one of my hobbies when I go out to L.A. is I like to visit filming locations, movie locations. Right. And one of my all-time favorite movies is Back to the Future. Um, over the last 10 years or so, I've visited multiple locations from Back to the Future. And there was a couple more that I'd been wanting to visit, so I hit those this time around. Uh, and the top left is, uh, in the movie it appears as uh, Hill Valley High School. Right. Uh, in real life, it's Whittier High School. And that's where they, uh, that's where Marty uh, went to school and they went back in time uh, to, to that school. So they got, there's a big iron fence around it now, but uh, I'm able to get my camera through the fence and get some pictures of the building. Um, and then there's the scene where, uh, where George McFly, Marty discovers he's a peeping Tom, where George McFly's in the tree and uh, he falls out of the tree and Marty saves him from getting hit by the car. Um, but that, puts a thing, a chain of events in motion. Uh, so I found the location where those homes were, George McFly's house, uh, um, uh, his mom's house, all that stuff. So it's really cool when you arrive at these locations and recognize them right. from the film, it's yeah. pretty neat. How, did, how in the world do you find a place like that? A lot of that information's online now, and there's is a it? website called IMDB, which is a movie website. And not only will it tell you, you know, who was in the movies and all that stuff, it'll tell you the filming locations. Okay. And and now it's it's at the point where they just give you an address, you punch it into your GPS, mm -hmm. and it'll take you right there. That's fantastic. So yeah. sometimes it takes a little detective work to find a location. Like a couple of years ago, I went to Venice Beach, and I had to use some detective work to find the opening scenes from Three's Company. Okay. When Jack is on a bike and he's riding on the beach, uh, there's no address for that. So you just have to kind of look yeah. for landmarks yep. to find that location. But wow. today, for the most part, you, you punch an address, you show up and go, oh, look at that. There's, there's the there house. It is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so that was fun. Here's some more locations. On the left, one of my favorite movies is uh, Pee-wee's Big Adventure. Oh, yeah. So I found Pee-wee's house uh, from that movie. Uh, there was a mom and a son playing in the front yard when I arrived, and I said, is this the Pee-wee house? And she laughed and said, yes. And I said, do you get a lot of visitors? And she's like, yes. <laughs> and I said, do you own the house? And she said, no, we're renting. And, and she's like, and we've been getting a lot of visitors. And it's been a lot of fun. And they were really nice about That's it. That's great. And uh, so they allowed me to take some pictures, and I did some side-by-side -side comparisons there. Um, the middle picture, uh, there's a restaurant in L.A. called El Coyote. Um, and it's a long time uh, restaurant in LA. And not only was it used in a, uh, Quentin Tarantino's film, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, but it has historical significance because it was the last meal of Sharon Tate and her friends oh. um, before they got murdered by the Manson family. Okay. Um, um. So it has historical significance and Quentin Tarantino wanted to shoot in the same restaurant for his scenes depicting that. Right. And so it's it's pretty interesting to go to that restaurant knowing that it's a filming location but it's also a, a historic location. And, um, and there's still a restaurant. It's a restaurant and it's really good food. And yeah. I was there a couple years ago and uh, they were really, really nice. And um, I visited a lot of locations from Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. It's one of my favorite movies. Great. Uh, in the top right there, um, I don't know if you're familiar with the show called Always Sunny in Philadelphia. And uh, the, the characters on the show own a bar called Patty's uh, Pub, and it's set in Philadelphia. And so I had always assumed all the filming locations were in Philadelphia. To my surprise, fairly recently, I found out that Patty's Pub is actually in L.A. Okay. And so I typed in the, the coordinates, showed up, there it was, wore my Patty's Pub t-shirt, and got a picture in front of the, uh, <laughs> the pub. And then the bottom right corner was one of the first locations I visited while I was there, uh, was E.T., uh, the house in E.T., oh, Elliot's yeah. house. Right. Um, and so anything you saw in the movie that was filled out, filmed outside of the house was filmed at this location when, when uh, the government shows up with their trucks and right, hazmat right. suits and everything. That was all filmed there. 
Um, the backyard stuff where like Elliot goes to the shed and sees E.T. for the first time, that was all done on a sound stage. Uh, and all the okay. interiors were done on a sound stage at Culver Studios. Right. Um, but all the outdoor exterior stuff was uh, at this place. A and, um, and then I also found some other locations where in the movie they went trick-or-treating and stuff like that. And I was able to find some of those locations as well. And I brought my little E.T. action figure to kind of well, set that's the yours. stage. Yeah, that's my <laughs> oh, that's little E.T. E. figure. And I, I joked that that was my first celebrity encounter while I was out there. So. <laughs> uh, I added this. Um, I was hoping you were going to appreciate this. So there's a woman in L.A. who runs a website and social media called Vintage Los Angeles. And she's an archivist and historian. And she tries to save the history of Los Angeles, which, you know, they're tearing down buildings every day. Right. Uh, her name is Allison Martino, and she is the daughter of Al Martino. Oh, Are you familiar with Al Martino? Yeah, absolutely. One of the great crooners yeah. in the vein of uh, Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, all those guys. Yeah, right. And so that's his daughter. And I've been following her on social media. I met her in L.A. a couple years ago. And I, I wanted to donate something to her archives. You know, she has historic pieces in her archives. And uh, about two years ago, I stumbled on, on eBay this blank acetate record from a place called Wallach's Music City. It was on, on Vine Street near Sunset. And people used to be able to go in there and for a fee were able to record a song on vinyl, if okay, you can believe it. Right. And so this guy on eBay had an unused blank acetate record from Wallach's Music City, and he said, he claimed that it might be the only one of its kind in existence. He's never seen another one. And so I purchased it and with the intent of donating it to Allison's archives. Well, my original plans in 2020 all fell apart. So I hung on to the record for almost two years, a year and a half, and then I let her know that I was coming out and we agreed to meet at the Smokehouse, which is a famous historic restaurant, uh, also another filming location. And uh, she happened to be there filming an a, a episode of a, a historic series where she was interviewing the owner of the Smokehouse. So I went there for lunch and when she had a break in filming, she came over, I gave her the record. Uh, she gave me a big hug, paid for my lunch, which was kind of cool. Oh, fantastic. And, uh, and she's like, let's get a picture together. So so that was pretty cool. And I thought that's you great. might appreciate that. Yeah, so, that's fantastic. Yeah, really nice person. This was probably Whoa, here you go. one of the highlights <laughs> of my trip here. I have a friend, uh, Nate Truman, who lives in L.A., and he heads up a, a group, a, a car club called uh, Star Car Central. And all the members of the club own cars from television and film. Okay. And um, so he invited me to come out to his place. He showed me his Batman collection and everything. And on the right there, uh, he's customizing this vintage car to look like the Batmobile from the comics from the 40s era. Okay. In the 40s, the Batmobile had a big face on it and a big fin on the back. And so he showed me that first and let me sit in it and get some pictures with it. And then he said, hey, you want to go get a bite to eat? And I said, yeah, sure. And he goes, let's go to In-N-Out Burger. And he pulls the tarp off the TV Batmobile. All right. Now, it's not the original. There's only one Batmobile that was used on the TV series, and that's in the private collector's hand right now. But there are replicas. And so he owns a very beautiful replica that he's put together. And he said, let's go to In-N-Out Burger in the Batmobile. And well, how does that compare to the car that you were in in the the dream cruise it's, it's basically the same car it's okay. a similar car yep there's there's a, there's at least one maybe two here in michigan and i'm sure there's a bunch in in california but driving down the road in the batmobile people were honking and waving and taking pictures <laughs> yeah, I bet. and when we got to in and out burger people were gathering around the car and checking it out and it was pretty cool going to get a hamburger I'll in bet. the batmobile that was <laughs> that was one of the highlights of the week that was pretty cool well <laughs> Uh, so then, the Thursday that I was out there was my busiest day. I had so much planned that day. Uh, at 10 o'clock in the morning, I went to the Peterson Museum. It's an automotive uh, museum, and their exhibits change all the time. And recently, they had a fantasy movie car exhibit uh, where they had the land speeder from Star Wars and a bunch of stuff. Right. Uh, now, with the new James Bond movie hitting theaters, uh, they 
did a James Bond exhibit, and oh, it was cool. jaw dropping. I'll bet that was These great. are screen used uh, cars from the James Bond movies. Um, it's a really unique building. That's it in the top left corner. You can't miss it when you're driving by it. And uh, in top middle, there's me standing in front of the Aston Martin DB5. Is that the same one they're using in the new movie? Yes, that's the car that they're using in the Daniel Craig movies. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then in the top right is Roger Moore's uh, underwater submarine, the Lotus Esprit from The oh. Spy Who Loved Me. There's a pretty famous scene where Roger Moore's driving on a dock. He's being chased by a helicopter, and he goes off the dock into the water, and then it converts into a submarine. Right. And that's one of the submarines that was used in the film. Uh, bottom left corner is, uh, uh, I think it's an AMC, AMX, that uh, another Roger Moore film where the car did a, uh, like a 360 spin in the air and they did it in one take. Um, and that was, uh, I forget which movie that was from. That might have been from uh, uh, Live and Let Die. Uh, same thing with the boat in the bottom right. I think that might be from the same movie. Um, and then the middle car is from the Pierce Brosnan era. Um, but yeah, they had the Daniel Craig cars and Timothy Dalton cars. There must have been 20 to 25 different really? cars and vehicles wow. from the James Bond movies. Absolutely incredible. Fantastic. I felt like a little kid. Yeah. So then I was there for about two hours, and then I went across the street um, to the Academy Museum, brand new, and I just happened to have a ticket to opening day. It was the very first day that the museum was open to the public, and it did not disappoint. Uh, in addition to screens showing films and artwork and all sorts of stuff, they had props, which is right up you my alley. You love that stuff. So they had the original animatronic ET that was used for filming, R2-D2, C-3PO, costumes in the bottom left corner, that's from uh, Jane Russell and Marilyn Monroe, gentlemen prefer blondes. blondes right? Uh, the bottom right corner is the rosebud sled from Citizen Kane, which survived filming. And then uh, Bruce, the shark from Jaws, um, this was the, the last surviving shark that was made from the same molds as the sharks you see in the movie. Okay. So even though this one wasn't used in the film, it was made from the same molds. And for the longest time, it was on display at a junkyard. Really? And it was famous to locals as the, the shark at the junkyard. And somebody apparently made them an offer they can't refuse. They bought the shark, uh, restored it, and donated it to the museum and oh. have it hanging from the ceiling. It was pretty neat to see. You but know, it gets I, I was, even better. Like, I, like you said, you know, I was listening to NPR the other day, and yeah. they, they had a special on this particular museum yeah. and that, that it just opened up, and it's 300,000 square feet, and it's uh, supposedly the state of the art, everything. It and is. You've got just about everything there. And you got there first day. Yeah, and the cool thing about getting there on the first day is they gave me a commemorative poster that said September 30th, 2021 on it. And I'm currently getting that framed. I'm going to have that hanging on my wall at home. That's fantastic. So that's a neat little um, uh, souvenir I brought back. Right. Um, oh. But the props keep getting better. In addition to all of these, they had an amazing Wizard of Oz uh, exhibit. And... As you There's can see, the shoes. they had the ruby <laughs> slippers, probably the most iconic movie props in history. This particular pair, there were several pair that were used for filming. Um, Judy Garland's feet would swell during dancing, so they had several sizes that she can swap out. And then her double had a pair, and there was the pair that were on the, the witch's feet when they curled up under the house, you know. Um, so there were several pairs. So the Smithsonian has a pair. They're a pair in private hands. And this particular pair, from what I read, um, was purchased by Leonardo DiCaprio and, okay. a, and a group of investors. And it is now display, on display at the Academy Museum. And it was really amazing to see those up close. Really incredible. Uh, they had Dorothy's dress, the witch's hat. And even though they think that the Tin Man costume has been lost to time, Jack Haley, who played the Tin Man, at the end of filming was given his oil can. Okay. So his oil can survived and is now on display at the museum. Um, so that was pretty incredible to see, these, wow. these original artifacts from The Wizard of Oz, one of the greatest movies ever made. Pretty cool. 
It took. It must have taken a long time to put this thing together. Yeah, you know, with all, there, of, all of the, the, the all of the stuff that's in there, plus building, you know, the, re, refurbing that building to make yeah. it into a museum. Yeah, the building used to be a department store called the May Company, and uh, I don't know if it had been closed prior to the academy uh, getting uh, purchasing it, but yeah, they did renovate that building and they retained a lot of the original features. Um, and then, of course, COVID delayed everything. It was originally supposed yeah. to open in 2020. Everything got delayed, but now they're they're finally yeah, open. They said so. it was a five-year project yeah. to put the thing together. And it's spectacular. And I, I recommend anybody who gets yeah. a chance, go check it out. It was, Great. it was awesome. So, And then, immediately after leaving the Academy Museum, I went to get in line for Jimmy Kimmel Live. All right. Uh, whenever I go out to L.A., I try to find out what's taping, what's filming in the area. I put in a request for Jimmy Kimmel tickets. I put in a couple different days, and I got uh, an email back saying that I was uh, approved for Thursday. But at the time when you put in your request, you don't know who your guests are going to be. Right. And so you, I check every day who's going to be the guest. And then just a few days before uh, before arriving, I found out that my guest was Charlize Theron, the beautiful actress who's... Uh, been in the Mad Max, uh, the remake, the remake, the reboot. She's been in the last two Fast and Furious movies. She's won an Oscar, um, and so I was really excited to get a genuine movie star right. uh, as my guest for uh, for Jimmy Kimmel Live. And then the musical guest, who also came out for an interview segment, was Elvis Costello. And after his interview segment, he leaves the studio where the the crowd is. And they have another studio set up that's like a concert stage. Really? Now, normally they would let the audience get up and go into the concert area, but because of COVID, they didn't want everyone standing shoulder to shoulder. As a matter of fact, in the audience for the for the talk show part of it, we were kind of spaced out a little bit. They didn't fill it to capacity. Okay. Um, so we had to watch Elvis perform on the video screens, but uh, it was a lot of fun and uh, it just had a blast. So much fun. And so the episode aired that night, and then if you want to see the clips, they were on YouTube the very next day. Really? So, yeah, and that's where I got these still images from. Some people see these images and think I took those pictures. No, you're not allowed to take <laughs> pictures get... during a filming. So my phone was in my pocket, but the next day on YouTube, I did some screen grabs so I can uh, great. get some images yeah. from it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that was a lot of fun. And I've done uh, the Jimmy Kimmel show twice. I've done Conan O'Brien, who now is not in production anymore, but I've done Conan O'Brien like four times. Really? And in New York, I've done Jimmy Fallon and David Letterman. So it's always fun to get a, a ticket to see a talk show. Man, you're rubbing elbows with the best. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's fun when you That's get great. a big star. So uh, this was kind of neat. So uh, on October 1st, Halloween season kicks in. And um, Quentin Tarantino owns a movie theater called the New Beverly Cinema. He bought an old theater, had it renovated, and shows classic films. And he shows his own movies there. Of course. Um, and everything he shows is on film. It's not digital. And so they did a matinee of uh, uh, John Carpenter's The Thing, which came out in, like, 1982, I think it was. And so I thought it would be fun to go see a horror movie, you know, to kick off the Halloween season. So I went to the New Beverly Cinema, got my popcorn pop, hot dog, primo seats, and watched The Thing. Well, at the end of The Thing, as credits are rolling, the manager it mentions that one of the actors, T.K. Carter, showed up to do a Q&A. Well, at this point, half the crowd had left. Okay. And luckily, I'm the type of guy who sits and watches the credits. And so as I was getting ready to leave, he announces that T.K. Carter was there. So I went back to my seat. The actor came out, did a Q&A with the audience, really? talked about his experiences making the movie. And that was one of those Hollywood moments that you just don't get here in Michigan. That right. There's always a chance that an actor will show up at the end of the movie and do a little Q&A. So that was a lot of fun. That was a nice surprise. Yes, that is a surprise. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And this is one of the last things I did when, uh, when I was out there. I had heard this story. I wanted to experience it for myself. So at Griffith Park, well, you know, you've heard of the observatory and all that. So there's the Griffith Park area of Los Angeles, and there's a carousel there, a merry-go-round. And the story goes that Walt Disney lived in the area and had two young daughters, um, uh, Sharon and I think Diane, 
and he would take his young daughters to this merry-go-round. And while they rode the merry-go-round, he would look around and he'd see families out there picnicking and stuff. And he would sit on the bench and he would watch his daughters on this merry-go-round. And he thought, you know what? I should create something that families can come to and ride rides. And that's where Disneyland the was born. The start of something big, right? Yeah. Wow. So I sat on a bench that had his name on it. And I sat there and I watched families on the merry-go-round. And of course, I had to ride the merry-go-round. <laughs> and I thought, this is where Disneyland was born. That's it's, amazing. It's, it's, it's so cool to get inside Walt Disney's head and look around and say, I need to do something. Yeah, and, wow. And then, of course, that spawned uh, Disney World in Florida and, and all that. But that's where it began. And, it, and the, the merry-go-round was built in the 30s, like 1936, 37, something like that. And uh, it's all original. They have the organ that's being renovated. And, wow. and it also may have inspired the uh, merry-go-round scene in Mary Poppins. There's a, right. uh, when they enter that, that animated world, they ride the merry-go-round, and then the horses break loose, and they ride them. And that may have been inspired by the, uh, by the carousel. So, uh, so it, not necessarily a filming location, but a cool historic location that uh, gave birth to Disney. How, how did you learn about this? You know, I only recently found out about that, but it's just, you know, my curiosity with Hollywood and, uh, you know, I have books on the history of Hollywood and the yeah. history of Disney Studios. And somewhere I, I came across this fact and I'm like, I wonder if that carousel is still there. So I drove to Griffith Park, parked and walked and found it and thought, wow, this is it. This there is it where is. it happened. Yeah, it's fantastic. Pretty neat. And, and Griffith Park's a pretty cool place to visit. Like I said, they have the observatory, which is amazing. Right. And there's a lot to see and do there. So, wow, nice. Yeah. And then, um, of course, there's the Hollywood sign. Oh, he's calling me back. Um, the picture on the right there is me visiting the Hollywood sign over the last 30 years. Um, oh. The first time I visited the Hollywood sign was in uh, 1989, and uh, every time I go back, even especially if I go back with friends or family, I take them up to the Hollywood sign. That's the touristy thing you have oh, yeah, to do. Oh yeah, yeah, you got to do that. And so that's 30 years of me uh, posing in front of the Hollywood sign. The top picture is my most recent uh, visit. Now, who's that with you on the left, lower on left? On the bottom there. So in 2018, uh, I was there with some friends and we were being silly and taking pictures in front of it. And we saw this photographer photographing this model. And oh, she was okay. just beautiful. And so we kind of watched her doing poses and stuff. She had like this retro vibe. And so finally I was like, I gotta ask, can I get a picture with you? And she giggled and said, yeah, sure. And so we did some silly poses together and just got some great photos out that of looks it. It was great. really yeah. neat. And then in the bottom right corner, and the last time I visited LA, uh, me and my friends hiked up to the top of the mountain there behind the Hollywood sign. So mm -hmm. you're standing behind the Hollywood sign overlooking Los Angeles. Looking and that down, was, right? That was a special moment. That was pretty cool. So, so that Hollywood sign, whenever I go out there, it calls my name and I got to make time to get out there and see it. So. But you didn't hike to the top this time. <laughs> Not, no, it was 90 <laughs> degrees when I was there and I'm like, yeah, I don't yeah. think I'm going to do that this time. But uh, it's, it's a workout. But, I'll bet. Um, they did, they did um, kind of smooth out the path to get up there. So it's a little easier on hikers to get up there. Um, and but it's so, still a good hike to get up to the is. top. Oh, yeah, it's a workout. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, when you get up there, you don't come down right away. You need to catch your breath. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so that's always fun to see. And then, you know, there's the other touristy things that I always do. Uh, Grauman's Chinese Theater with the hand and footprints, you know, Marilyn Monroe, Jane Russell. Oh, yeah. Uh, wow. All of that. Uh, the Walk of Fame. You got to always check out the Walk of Fame. And in the middle there, that's just a, a photo that I love. That's the Hollywood uh, Wax Museum. That neon sign has been there forever. And it just makes a really cool photo op. And yeah. um, so in addition to always looking for something new and unique to do, I always like enjoy uh, going back to seeing the touristy things that um, all the celebrities uh, uh, or all the visitors and tourists uh, come out and see. And um, on Hollywood Boulevard, right off of Hollywood Boulevard, there's, a, there's another museum, a Hollywood museum, not to be confused with the Academy Museum. 
but they have rotating exhibits, and they most recently had uh, Back to the Future uh, props and artifacts, right. and the old Batman TV show, and okay. um, so there's so much to see and do out there that's never boring. It's always go, 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 rush, 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 and and then of course there's the beaches. Um, yeah. I hit while I was out there this uh, during the week. I was in Malibu. I was at Redondo Beach. I went to Marine, uh, Marina del Rey. Met went up with some family in Long Beach, where the Queen Mary is yeah. parked. I hear the the future of Queen Mary is is up in the air. There, the city is is struggling to maintain it. And I've heard the same thing. They're faced right. with the dilemma of having to repair it or yeah. scrapping. It. What do we do with this thing? Yeah, and I hope they don't scrap it. I hope they salvage it. Um, but yeah, there's there's so much to see and do in L.A. And that's why. It's my happy place. It's where I, I like to go. It's <laughs> where I go to have fun and running in the celebrities. And, uh, oh, it's, it's such a good time. That's great. Have well, you Joel, been? I have, uh, no, I haven't been to Hollywood. Oh, you got to get out there. I haven't been to Hollywood. I'll give you a tour when you go out there. But uh, we like San Diego. Wow. Oh, San Diego is beautiful. <laughs> I was born in San Diego. Were you really? Um, but we moved to Michigan when I was really, really young. And uh, I've been there once. I've visited once since then, and it's just a beautiful town. Yeah, yeah San Diego's. We, we've been out there a couple times in the last three years, four years. Yeah. It's great. Yeah, it's fun. Well, Joe, thank you so much for bringing us this wonderful program. My I pleasure. Mean, Always happy to talk about my trip. It's, it's been fantastic having you on. And... Uh, what a great, uh, what a great experience! Yeah, it's nice to see that things are returning back to normal, and uh, there are a couple of things haven't returned back to normal yet. Uh, some of the studios that normally give tours, they've shut down their tours temporarily okay. because of COVID. Um, and some businesses haven't recovered yet. They were shuttered. Um, but hopefully the, the L.A. and the country will start, you know, taking these steps toward returning things back right. to normal. Right, right. Okay, well, thanks for joining us. My and, pleasure. And uh, hopefully we can do this again next year. All right, I'm, next I'm year. already thinking about my next trip. All right, thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs>